But there was one more recently that made me laugh really hard because it was because I totally understood where they were coming from. But it was one of my mini block sampler quilts. Uh, it's 48 blocks, but I had done a seven by seven layout. So there was like 49 spaces. So yeah. I left the, the center space empty. And someone commented is like, that empty space makes me twitch. <laughs> You're listening to Fussy Cutters Club Podcast, a show that gives you permission to cut into the good fabric so you can make quilts you love. And now your host, who believes it's not a crime to love using novelty fabrics, Ange Wilson. Hello, hello. Welcome back, Fussy Cutters. Today we are having a visit from one of my favourite people, John from Art East Quilt Co. This is John's second appearance on the podcast. He is just so adorable that um, I can't get enough. And so you're going to have to, I was going to say suffer through, but it's not suffering. It's an absolute joy to hear John. And John is sharing with us today his latest creation and it is just super cute. It is ticking all the cute boxes. I am thrilled to see what he's come up with and I cannot wait to see the other versions of it that people make and the joy that it brings to those who sew with his pattern. So let's get chatting. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I guess our first our first date went well. I'm I'm back for a second. <laughs> Yes. Well, <laughs> you did bring me my favorite stuff, confectionery and fabric. So, I, you know, you were bound for success from the start. <laughs> but, yes, it, and that our podcast interview is one of the best performing podcast interviews so far. So I'm very excited about that. So, Oh, um, that's so great to hear. Yeah, yeah. I love it when people love the people I love. Like, so, um, but yes, which, you know, all the podcasts should be rated the same then, but still. Okay. We're here to talk about sew alongs because you have so long. a, so a new sew along dropping on the 1st of July, July. First of well, we're, un, we're doing our big unveil on June 1st. Oh, that's so. right. So, yep. So that's not, so by the time this goes to air, you will have announced it because that was my exactly. plan. So which, which means you get a sneak peek at everything. Yes, I'm very excited. So, John, <laughs> what's this so along about? Oh well, <laughs> why don't I? Why don't? Why don't I show you? Okay. Okay. This is technologically advanced, peeps. We're sharing stuff from. I we are doing it. So this year's so along is called the 100 Acre Wood Sew Along. Oh, that's so cute. <gasps> and <laughs> oh, you did the kangaroo! <laughs> I thought of you. <laughs> oh, that is super and, uh, cute. So it is, it's uh, inspired by the original Winnie the Pooh books by A.A. A. Milne. Oh, look at um, Tigger. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I was... Telling Matt, I said, this might be my, my, I say this a lot. And I say this on every interview I do. Every time I do something new, I say, this is my favorite, but I, I think this might be my, my favorite quilt. Oh, uh, it is going into this. Yeah. It's super cute. And like Christopher Robin, oh, he has the cutest little rosy cheeks and those yellow gum boots. <laughs> and I like that. It's, it is traditional Winnie the Pooh. It's not Disney fied. Winnie the Pooh. Oh, look at the glasses first, on the owl. Yeah. So for the first time, we're actually, um, so in our kit, uh, we're including a small spool of Aurifil six strand cotton embroidery floss. Yep. So, all um, the- and there's like, yeah, so there's optional, just very simple hand running stitch to just add some embellishments to the quilt and they are optional. But we have glasses on owl. We have some whiskers on rabbit and tigger. Uh, we have the word honey across the pots. Pooh's little, Pooh's holding a balloon. So the little string for the balloon oh, is that's also super stitched. super cute. As well as some bee lines. Yeah. So the little buzzing bees, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which I'm, I'm really excited cute. about. 
Yeah, I, I, I was um, really trying to bring some movement to the quilt. And I think the bees and then and we the have leaves. like the, the, the leaves, the falling leaves kind of bring yeah. a little bit of movement to it. Uh, and there's a lot more negative space in this one than our previous one. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really different. Yeah, um, but it's, it's but, but not. Still, <laughs> it's really different, yeah, but exactly. it's not. It's, <laughs> yes, exactly. I think it's still recognizable as, uh, as our work. <laughs> so you've partnered with Riley Blake for this sew along? Yes. So we were officially sponsored by Riley Blake Designs. Uh, so this, all the fabrics that I had in mind while uh, designing the quilt um, and the kit, it's all Riley Blake fabrics, all of their basics lines. They have a lot of fabrics that work really well for my type of quilt pattern because we cut down pieces quite small. So their basics are really well suited for that. Yeah. And I've, I've become very familiar with Riley Blake's basics lines recently because I've been doing a lot of uh, reimagining our patterns in their fabrics for them recently. So it just, it just all kind of came together when it was time to uh, design this quilt. Um, I knew exactly where I wanted to go in terms of the fabric for it. And so I guess for those that aren't familiar, because this is what, your eighth sew along of this type? Seven? So, uh, well, technically of this, of this type, it's going to be the sixth. But we had kind of a couple of smaller ones in there. There was there's the folk sampler, which is still ongoing. And then last year we had our mini block sampler um, as well. So, yeah, but for this big one. So we we kind of have this one big one a year uh, where the quilt is quite, um, in my opinion, quite epic. Yep. It's almost like it's nine mini quilts put together. So yep. so they're they're I don't want to say challenging, but they take planning to do. So it is like nine uh, separate little mini quilts that come together, but it's broken up in a way that I find is still very manageable to do um, on a monthly basis. Yeah. And that it's a sew along where, like you said, you're doing the block sort of a block a month kind of thing. But at the end of completing that mm-hmm. block, the satisfaction of completing those blocks is just amazing. It's such a big dopamine hit for those of you that are chasing the dopamine to finish yeah. one of those. <laughs> and this, I just really love that it's got that old school Winnie the Pooh vibe to it. It's not, it's not cartoony. It's not, they're like Christopher Robin's toys, you know, they're not a, they've still got that kind of imagination to them. I'm so glad you them. said that. But yes. Yeah, because that's what I was going for. I wanted to, and a lot of the fabrics that I chose for this one. So there's there's 54 different fabrics <laughs> <laughs> in this quilt. So the kit comes with 54 different fabrics. Um, but I did choose them, and I because I, I wanted them to have that toy feel. I used a lot of Lori Holt basics yeah. to kind of give the uh, characters a kind of patchworky vintagey kind of feel and it just it just I think it worked really well yeah um and I'm really excited excited about how the fabrics fit into this world so I, I can't wait for other people to see it and um has the lakeside long armor touched it yet <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> she's gonna love that you asked about her <laughs> the, I, the I lakeside long it. armor <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you, we need to do a podcast serial drama thing on the Lakeside Long Armour. <laughs> but this quilt lends itself so, to a really nice custom because of that movement in it and the negative space. Yeah. So I, so I think you've mentioned to, mentioned this with your uh, with your Long Armour. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. Rayleigh. What's her name That's again? Right. Your friend? Rayleigh. Rayleigh. Yeah. Rayleigh. So I find that Melissa, the Lakeside Long Armour, always does the best work when I let her have the most ring <laughs> over what she can do. <laughs> but I really have this kind of wish list for this one where because there's so much negative space in the back of this quilt, I had this idea of how cool would it be if we could have the text of the first chapter <gasps> yep. quilted into the background. So I've kind of given her that 
that challenge. So we'll hopefully that'll work out in some way and we'll figure something out. But um, yeah, I would love to have the background kind of done all in the text from the first chapter and then, you know, all the characters be custom uh, on top of that. I think it would be really cool. Oh, that is going to be epic. I don't, if it, yeah. Ray, if it was Rayleigh, if I could be so bold as to presume what Rayleigh would react with, she would be like, I hate you. That's very hard but I love it and I will do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was very similar to uh, Melissa's reaction. Because <laughs> uh, in my head I'm thinking even a really nice panto of like maple leaves with swirls blowing because then you would get the yeah. effect of the autumnal um, leaves blowing. And But, yeah, it's just it's going to be so fun to see how people fussy cut it like the umbrella, yes. I was thinking the stripes on the umbrella, on his little gumboots, mm-hmm. the florals from Untamed would be really nice in there as well. Oh. And But, yeah, yes. it's going to be yeah. – people are going to have fun with it. So that's launching 1st of June. And then so they buy – they essentially buy a place in the or so along and so that, that gets them mm-hmm. the pattern and then access to your community where you have – monthly challenges and interviews and giveaways and and fun and a very engaged community and a very supportive community. So that's all the same for 100 Acre Woods? It is. It is. Um, so no matter how you sew along with us, um, you'll get access to that community. So like you said, that that gives you the pattern. So if you're just looking for the digital patterns, that's what you want to, that's what you want to do is you get access to that community and then you get all the bonus of the community that comes with it. This year, we're really excited too, because we are reformatting uh, our digital pattern. So it's an interactive pattern in our community. So the text will be interspersed with real photos and videos that you can click on to watch certain parts. Uh, wow. So it's, it's going to be quite exciting. Yeah. Um, it's the first time we're doing it that way. Oh, you already give so much support with your sew along. So this is going to be next level. So the, how did you decide on Winnie? So it's been, it's been on my wish list to do. Uh, So Winnie the Pooh has entered public domain here in North America last January. It did. So that's when it was really on my radar. However, Tigger (laughs) didn't enter public domain until the following January, which has just passed. So I knew that this was the year that I wanted to get my hands on this subject before, before anybody else. (laughs) Because we know it's going to happen. We're going to see, we're probably going to see a lot of poo um, in the next four (laughs) or five years or so. Plus there's a lot of nostalgia uh, with Winnie the Pooh for me. So I mean, my youngest siblings, since the day they were born, I called them Pooh. <laughs> um, you know, the movies yeah. are always on. Yep. When we were kids, I had the books, you know, uh, it's just, it's, it, I think, I think Pooh kind of has a place in everyone's yep. uh, memory. Yeah. When we were at Disney in 2019 in California, I got so excited because Eeyore, was doing the walk around in the Hundred Acre Woods section of Disneyland. And I was like, oh. I came out of the shop having just seen a quilt and an old Singer sewing machine in the Hundred Acres shop. Like they've got the way that they've set dressed the shop is all um, old quilts and sewing paraphernalia and everything in the rafters. And I came out of the store on a high from you know, being seen as a quilter at Disneyland and then walk straight out and into Eeyore. And I'm like enthusiastically tugging on my husband's sleeve going, it's Eeyore, it's Eeyore. And he's just oh, like. I thought you were going to say his tail. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was taking photos with little kids who I have to say, I think I was more excited than the little kids, which is a bit sad, but it was just such a thrill to see them and to be immersed in the hundred acre woods, like to go into this, the burrow and and the store and the honey pots and all of that sort of thing, and it's just so exciting to go. Oh, quilters will be able to revisit their childhood memories while also cultivating new memories for the kids that are in their lives now, and to be Absolutely. able to put 
such a personal spin on it because you have the option with your sew alongs to do the kit, but then you also have the options to pick your own fabrics. So exactly, you could put anything that's special to you in the in the construction of it. And so that's really yeah. exciting too. So that's your big ticket item for Art East is your sew along. And then you're still going to have other quilts in amongst that, aren't you? I am. <laughs> so I've got some some other other things brewing right now, specifically with Riley Blake that I that I'll be, I'll be able to talk about in a couple of months' time that I'm really excited about oh, that uh, to exciting. bring to life as well. So other other kind of bucket bucket list subject matters that I've wanted to do, but um, yeah. So yeah, there'll be the so long. We'll have hopefully three new patterns in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> the ideas are there. <laughs> I don't know how yeah, you it's do it. Be exciting. And we'll be right back. Are you looking for a safe space to express who you are as a fabricaholic? <laughs> Look, that seems funny and it's all weird and it's and it's right for me to say that. But let's face it, if you're listening to this podcast, there's a fair chance that you have quite a substantial fabric collection and that you pay attention to what fabrics are being released, that you like being creative, that you make time for patchwork and that you look for friends who share a similar outlook on life and a similar appreciation for creativity and sewing and fabric collection and what the latest designers are doing. Look, if that's you, the good news is I've started a safe place for all of us to get together. It's all about having a place where you can come, share your creativity, share your favourite fabrics. We're not going to be quilt police. We don't care if your favourite fabric is a fabric that's covered with rubber ducks. Bring it, sister. That's what we want to see. So if you're looking for like-minded people, why not check out Society Gnome? You can find all the details at gnomeangel.com. We look forward to welcoming you to the group. And now, on with the chat. Let's just, if you don't mind, have a bit of a talk about, because so often we'll talk about the structure of your business in broad Mm -hmm. strokes, not nitty-gritty, but so often people look at quilt pattern designers and go, oh, I want that, I want to do that job, I want to, you know, I want to work from home and I want to be my own creative director and I want to make stuff. And and so how do you balance, because it is such a demanding job with so many different roles that one person has to fit, how do you balance your job with actually having a life and then giving yourself the space to make that creative choice about I'm going to design Winnie the Pooh and I'm going to be immersed in that for 12 months or Talk us through that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a very common misconception about what what we do as pattern designers is that people think, I think we're doing the fun designing part all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, that's, <laughs> and yep. that's not the case that is part of it, but it's such a small part of it. I, I always like to, you know, when, just thinking about the amount of time that goes into one pattern. So for example... If we're talking about a pattern as as complex as our sew along patterns, that process from like start to finish, it's it's hours and hours and hours of planning before you even write the pattern. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of moving parts. So I'm very lucky that I have great support in my business. So Art East isn't only me, it's also my partner Matthew, uh, who who does a lot of the businessy things that I find you know, boring that he loves. And then I'm sure the things that I do, he, he kind of is amazed at too. So we compliment each other really well there. But there's, but we now, I get a lot of help now uh, outside as well. So we've started working with a really great uh, marketing team locally here who's, you know, can now help with like graphics and marketing and social media and things like that. So we're going to start to see some more um, some more things come from them, which is really exciting. And they're going to help put the community together in our, in our uh, interactive interactive patterns. One thing for me that's helped keep, because designing the patterns and making quilts, of course, is my first love and the thing that I love doing the most. 
as part of this job. And one thing that's really helped me make sure that I don't lose that part of it is coming up with a release schedule for myself. So I know that, you know, every summer I'm going to be dropping the next solo long. Um, in the fall, I, I try to do three patterns. In the spring, I try to do three patterns. Yeah. It just, it makes sure, it, because it would be very easy to ignore that and get yep. caught up with everything else, everything else that's going along. So I do stay very busy. Uh, but <laughs> so you said something about how do you balance? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was the trick. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know if there's right. much balance in going on. Yeah, <laughs> you fell right in my evil lair. But yes, yeah, yeah there's no balance. But, uh, there is no balance. It's an all-consuming job. I mean, when I'm not actually working on patterns or working on quilts, I'm thinking about quilts or I'm I'm thinking of designs. Uh, it's also a, in a way, it's a scary, a scary line of work because when you release something that you've worked so hard on and that you're so passionate about, you just you hope the response is good. <laughs> So it's it's kind of a very vulnerable yeah. place to put yourself as well. Yeah. Not that everyone needs to like everything you do because that's never going to happen. But nor is validation completely necessary. But you it, you do want that encouragement to keep going. Yeah, and I think <laughs> your community is so supportive, and like you've got your core diehard artist fans, and. I think yeah. if you're anything like me, you don't want to disappoint them and you enjoy seeing exactly. how excited they get about stuff and what they embrace and what they don't embrace. And and so it becomes this kind of symbiotic relationship where you're excited about something but you're waiting to see if they're going to be excited about it. And it's it's a really interesting dynamic to put as a designer to put something that's so connected to who you are out into the world and see how it's accepted or rejected or and I think too a lot of times people especially on social media leave comments or tag their friend and say to their friend oh check this out I don't know what they were thinking like and forget (laughs) forget that that there's a real person on the other end of that that has to read that and while it mightn't float your boat the fact that you've put that out there sometimes sticks with you a little bit more as a designer than <laughs> the person who's like, it's the best thing I've ever seen. You're a genius. Yeah. Um, and so I try, I've, try I to get be better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's um, a learned behavior not to get too upset when you see things yeah. like that. And at, at one point um, it becomes almost funny uh, just to see how far someone will go <laughs> in the comment <laughs> section. Yeah. But we're not so, encouraging it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not encouraging it. But there was one more recently that made me laugh really hard because it was because I totally understood where they were coming from. But it was one of my mini block sampler quilts. Uh, it's 48 blocks, but I had done a seven by seven layout. So there was like 49 spaces. So yeah. I left the, the center space empty. And someone commented is like, that empty space makes me twitch. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I feel your pain. Yeah. It just made, yeah. It just, it just made me laugh. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's funny sometimes. It's funny sometimes how you can relate to the people who don't like something in a really human kind of way because oftentimes you might have had the similar reaction and then for whatever reason, for design, aesthetic, whatever, because it evokes a reaction like that in you, you make the choice to do it anyway. And I think sometimes when I've done that and then someone else has called it out, I'm kind of like, yeah, you get the point. That's why it's like that. It's it's supposed to make you twitch because it makes me twitch. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But, yes, but, yeah, it's just – it's such a hard thing to learn to have such a, have a thick skin and I am definitely not very good at it. Despite my eating to try and get thicker, it's not. <laughs> I'm still squidgy and it still hurts. But, yes, yeah, so the marketing teams are very exciting 
progression. And I, I have to ask, did you choose local because you could have a tactile relationship with them where you could go in, see them, they could come and see your stuff and you're supporting local yeah. or was it you knew them? Like what was the rationale behind going with someone you can actually see instead of doing it remotely? So, oh, they're going to love this. So I'll shout them out. There's a there's a group here called Anchored Ideas. It's a female operated and owned um, marketing group and they just all rock there. And uh, we had seen some of their work that they've done locally with some other creative things that were going on. There was like, um, there was like a big musical that was going on that they did all of the branding and stuff for, and it was really well done, really cool. So uh, it was kind of a no brainer that we were going to want to go with somebody local. We have a a really big local culture on our island too. I'm (laughs) I'm actually wearing a baseball hat of another local business here. This is this is our island here. That's the shape what I think. I was going to ask you when I first logged in. I thought, is he wearing a squirrel? Is that a squirrel? And then as we <laughs> as the picture came into focus, I was like, that's totally got to be where he lives. I am never going to unsee that I live on a giant squirrel now. <laughs> You're welcome. That's why we're all nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and why you can't concentrate? You're constantly going squirrel, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> so for anybody listening, look up Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia, Canada. We're going to call it Squirrel Island now from yeah. now on. Sorry. So lo- local business. Yeah. They got. <laughs> So you've seen yeah, so their we're stuff. Really, we're really excited to work with them. Yeah. Yeah, we see their stuff. They're really excited to work with uh, another creative business as well. Um, some of them, none of them are quilters yet, although I've got my eye on on one of them. We're, <laughs> we're going to have her quilting by the end, I can tell. Um, <laughs> this is how you but become the some of them the have accom- quilters in the family. <laughs> but this is how you become the accomplice <laughs> to the lakeside long armor. I've got my eye on her. She'll yeah. be a quilter by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. And for me personally, I love their business name because it anchored. Yes. yes, I'm like I'm all about the nautical. Do you know what? It's we are so surrounded by. <laughs> it's funny because we're so surrounded by nautical culture here um, that I didn't even pick up on that. Well, I like I I picked up on it, but it doesn't register as nautical to me anymore. It's yeah. just so ingrained in yeah. where I live. <laughs> Yeah, we um it's really funny because when we moved back up here I was like, oh, we're moving back to a coastal town, like a the island um the coast is here and and there's an island just off our coast and all that sort of stuff and I was like, we're getting back to that nautical environment from being a landlocked town for so long. And now we live in the mm-hmm. rainforest, and so it seems really disconnected to have anything nautical here because we're and we're on the banks of the river, so it's not like there's not water, but I can't do any of the decorating that I had in my head where I was like, we're going to have a coastal house and it'll have all anchors everywhere and there'll be <laughs> ships and fish and, and it's just all greenery and trees and butterflies and birds and I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I said to you the You have husband, to do like a, a coastal, coastal rainforest fusion. Yeah, well, I was saying to him we should just buy a holiday house. And, like, we don't have the money to afford a holiday house, but I'm like, we should just buy one of those little fibro shacks on the beach somewhere on the coast between us and another town and then I could go to town on it. And he's like, and how are we going to pay for that, dear? You've got a fabric addiction. And I'm like, I can stop any time. <laughs> so, um, yes, so I'm very jealous of you living on an island, even though it's shaped like a squirrel, and being surrounded by nautical stuff. <laughs> and now you work with someone who I can only hope their logo has an anchor in it. Yes. Yep. See, I love those women already. So that's really exciting. So a marketing team. So this is all stuff that people don't fully understand. So up until this point, you and Matt have been the dynamic duo doing everything. And so to get to where you are and the level of success that you've had and the brand recognition that you've got, that's just being you two, which is huge. It, it it has really, yeah. It was just us. Um, it's yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, it really has. <laughs> yep. 
and I think because we're <laughs> we're so motivated by the next thing, by the next quilt design, by the mm-hmm. next thing that it, we often miss these milestones that come past where you're like, you've grown this business to a point where you can now engage a third party external business and put money back into your community because of the work yeah. that you and Matt have done, which hats off, pardon the pun. You've done um, you've oh, done amazing that's... things. So Oh well, thank you so much. It's so Matt, my favorite, Matt, the little peanut yeah. butter monkey, he does all your <laughs> business related stuff. And so you, you see him occasionally popping up in your lives all of that. Does he ever request yeah. like a, a subject matter for your next quilt or does he just let you go? He doesn't kind of go, honey, I'd really like a, a panda bear or. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes he does have ideas and I have used them. So one of our, our more recent releases was called Tartan Star. So he, uh, he thought, oh, it would be really cool if he had a tartan pattern. And I thought, well, tartan, tartan's been done a lot. Let's, let's make it a little bit different. So, uh, so that was really his brain baby. And then I used the star motif because the, um, my very first quilt that I made was an eight pointed star, uh, quilt. So it's always had, I've I've always loved star quilts. So it was kind of like a marriage of those things. But actually what's really funny, I don't know if I've talked about this with you before is, but Matt grew up with a great grandmother who was a quilter. His grandmother quilted as well, but the quilts that he was kind of wrapped in yep. as a young lad uh, were made by his great-grandmother, and she used a lot of old clothing to make the quilts. So there was always, like, patches of corduroy <laughs> in the quilts he grew up with. So he has this idea that a quilt is made 150 times better if there's corduroy involved in it somehow. Oh, <laughs> isn't the fray point on a corduroy really high though like doesn't it unravel really i I, I, well i i thought so but i mean the quilts that they still exist at his grandparents house and they're probably 50 years old or so and they're in great shape (laughs) yeah no i just have made when you cut it the edges but yeah maybe it's just cheap corduroy that I've and now all I have in my head is do you know that episode of Seinfeld where George gets the corduroy pants and everywhere he walks there's that <laughs> yes. sound of corduroy on corduroy <laughs> yes he sounds like he could start a fire <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you can do it in bed two quilts if you quilt bed you can have that <laughs> I have I have made a quilt for him with corduroy in it it's just a plain block quilt that I've made. And actually, actually, it's quite sweet because his grandmother had some corduroy from his great grandmother from from her old stash. So I was able to include some of the oh, pieces from nice. her in this quilt for him. Yeah. And then I put I, I did a corduroy binding, which oh. I probably will never do again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, no. But uh, but no, he he loves it. But I also made him a couple of pillows and. Uh, I put corduroy on the back of those too. So I'll sneak it in there when I can. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> but like Winnie the Pooh, if you had like a a honey-coloured corduroy, he'd feel great in corduroy. Oh, he would. <laughs> oh, d- uh, don't let Matt hear this. I'm going to be making a corduroy poo. I'm just thinking of other places corduroy could work really well. And I'm thinking like the, the honey pots yep. could be really good. The tree bark, yeah, depending if you where you run yeah. the corduroy ridges but yeah I mean that's the thing with quilting that I've always loved is you can input stuff that's really special and unique to your life experience into it and it's so it's lovely to see that you guys have that that balance and that give and take back and forth because I often try and get my husband to show an interest (laughs) I mean he's supportive (laughs) and he's interested but like I've often said to him honey is there anything that you would like do you know? And he's like, no, I just like whatever you make. And I'm like, oh, fair enough. And so, <laughs> you know, there's times where I'm like, oh, it'd be, I feel like he's drowning in a house full of quilts that reflect my design desires. But then when I look at them, there's like Lego fabric in them. There's Star Wars fabric in them. There's Simpsons fabric in it. And I pick fabric and colors that remind me of him. So his 
personality is inadvertently reflected. And the same with the kid. Like I put stuff that's exciting to him in there. Yeah. And so it's it's an an art that kind of takes on the personality of those around it when you make a quilt. Yeah. I, I, it's probably I mean, all arts like that. I mean, that's like one of the fun things about looking at quilts that you've made in the past is through the choices you made in that quilt, whether it be in fabric or how you fussy cut or the colors or the pattern, you can kind of remember what influenced all of your decisions yeah. in the quilt. And that's whether it be, you know, something that was going on in your life at the time, whether it be the influence of a loved one, you know, uh, if you were thinking of a loved one that might influence your colors that you're choosing, even if the quilt's not for them. Yeah. There's always kind of those those undertones for it. We have a family. Yeah, I mean, well, I was going to say we have a family history of um, Alzheimer's and dementia, right? And so mm, in yeah. in my head, I'm like, it's highly likely that I will end up with some sort of degenerative brain thing happening at some point. And so I often say to my husband, which just freaks him out, babe, when I end up in the home, make sure I get this quilt because it'll prompt this memory. <laughs> Because in my head I kind of just go, that's to me I think that's what quilts will be like when we're older is you're yeah. surrounded by stuff that you made and that has memory and, and connection. And and I I do think at some point I will end up in an aged person's home and you'll have lots of time just sitting in your bed or because I saw it happen with my grandparents and I kind of think I yeah. hope – it is my hope that if, if I end up in one of those places that I have my quilts with me. So oh, that- I'm sh- you'll have people to make sure that happens, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the kid went to school yesterday and forgot forgot to wear the right uniform, so he's out. His memory's not as great as everyone else's. Oh, no. <laughs> um, the husband forgets stuff all the time. When we got married... Tell me if you can relate to this. We got married, right? And I was so busy planning everything, organizing it, and family turned up like a couple of days before the wedding. And so we were busy, you know, coordinating and entertaining and and all the madness that goes with the wedding. And so I said to my husband to be, babe, when you pack for our overnighter at the hotel on the night of our wedding, could you pack some clothes for me so that I can, you know, the next day I've got something to wear, right? I just didn't have time to do it. <laughs> Not a difficult task. So we we get married. The night of our wedding we go to the hotel and it's like the swankiest hotel in Canberra at the time. It's costing some <laughs> stupid amount of money and like where your bows, oh, I don't think you have that word, we're like rednecks going in there. Like I feel so out of place at this hotel. And I walk in in my wedding dress, which is bright red, like it's a red tie silk, deep red colour. So I'm already standing out. We go up, we get to the room. I go, babe, what'd you pack me to wear? A T-shirt and no shoes, no nothing else, no shorts, no <laughs> like nothing, a shirt. That was so it. So he he expected you. So wait, this ties in really nicely with our theme. He was expecting you to Winnie the Pooh it. <laughs> or Donald Duck it. <laughs> or Donald Duck it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the next day I get, get up, I have to wear the full bridal skirt, right? Like it's a big, puffy <laughs> kind of just huge red skirt an old T-shirt because he didn't even get me, like, a nice T-shirt. It was just some scungy one he picked off the top of the laundry. <laughs> no shoes, so I'm walking out in the slippers from our <laughs> room and I get to the <laughs> lobby and they're having, like, the BMW are launching their new car for the year at the hotel and so the whole <laughs> lobby is full of all these people and here I am trying to slink out. He didn't even pack me a hairbrush so I'd had like this big updo so I'd slept on it and it was all kind of out of whack, <laughs> beehive kind of mess. It was just so funny. I was mortified that it was like, babe, all you had to do was pack me a top and a bottom. That's there's nothing. It's so difficult. <laughs> so you'll forgive me if I'm not confident I'll end up with quilts. In- <laughs> 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 oh, 
right. Well, a valuable lesson was learned that night. Yes. Yes, it was. It was just so funny. And like just the hotel's stunning. It's the one of the oldest hotels in Canberra. And so I had in my head that we would go down for breakfast. We would get to enjoy the architecture and, you know, look around because it's an art deco hotel and look around oh, and just nice. soak it in and all that sort of stuff. Couldn't have breakfast because I couldn't leave the room, couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Had to slink out of there really quickly. It was just so funny. But, yes, so, you know, <laughs> love him to pieces. 20 years later, he's still no better and we often joke. I was going to say, does he know how to pack for you now? <laughs> no, no, bless him. But, yes, so. One day I might make a quilt that has that shirt in it because I still have it. So, Oh, that's great. Yeah. I put it in my memory box for our wedding because I was like, this is a memory I want to remember. Being embarrassed, <laughs> mortified. Yeah. Um, but, yes. Yeah, so- it's also a great thing to have in case of a fight. You can just pull out the shirt and say, do you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, don't you have – we have the 24-hour rule. We're not – I'm going to drop some – how we've lasted 20 years advice. We have a 24 hour rule, right? So I read somewhere early on that a lot of fights in partnerships and marriages and, and between friends and stuff are because people keep recycling the same. In 2002, you didn't pack my bag properly. And so we instigated very early on in our relationship, a 24 hour rule. You've got 24 hours to decide whether it's worth mentioning and having the hard conversation at that point in time, or you can't bring it up again. And so uh, you either, that's a good one. Yeah, you either have to let it go or you have to deal with it. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But for the majority of times it works, right, because you make a choice, is it worth getting, is it worth having a bad day over this, is it a big yeah. ticket item? But we also instigated it in the reverse where you only have 24 hours to give someone a hard time if they've done something stupid, right? So oh, you, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> you only have 24 hours to take the mickey out of them if they've, like, make fun of them if they've done something dumb, right? Like <laughs> on Monday I bought myself an electric trike because I'm going to try and get out and ride a bit more. And I am not known for my coordination or balance. And so I got on the trike out the front of our place didn't have the motor turned on or anything, just using it as a bicycle and rolled into a parked car. <laughs> oh. So, like, so you were hit by a parked car, essentially. No, I hit the parked car. <laughs> and it's not even our car. <laughs> it was a neighbor's car, so I was even doubly mortified. So he only had 24 hours to talk about how much of a dork I'd been running into that car, which is good because sometimes we do some really crazy stuff where you just like, I could go to town on this for days. And at times he'll be like, you've only got 24 hours, milk it, honey. The t- clock is ticking. But, yes, so it's been a... Um, I, th- I think we need to employ that. <laughs> but it's good, right? 24 hours. So, um, yeah. But we try really hard. A great hard. other piece, another piece of advice. I've heard. Wait, this is marriage advice with Angie and John. <laughs> 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 so another great piece of advice I heard from a podcast recently was how to frame when when your partner is saying something that you're not necessarily appreciating or you're taking a certain way. You can't you have to remember that it's your interpretation yeah. and not necessarily what they're saying. So he said when things like that happen, preface what you say with the lie I'm telling myself right now. Oh is that that's a good one. You aren't happy with blah, blah, blah. Or the the story I'm telling myself right now is that you didn't like it when I did this or you hate me or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the story I'm telling myself right now is you don't appreciate how good you've got it by being married to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Actually, while we're talking about married couples and advice and funny things, when we spoke last time, you mentioned a podcast that you listened to in a, an Australian <gasps> podcast that you listened to. Yes. And then it... And it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to shout out all of the Tarpers out there. <laughs> Tony and Ryan podcast Ers. It turns out that there is quite significant overlap between 
the listeners of the Fussy Cutters Club <laughs> and the Tony and Ryan podcast. <laughs> so I think what we and they should were do, quite excited. I think what we should do, because we should put it our intentions out there, I think we should have a double date with Tony and Ryan. So I'm going to reach oh out and see. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long shot. But... That would be amazing. <laughs> Because I just want to see your Ryan. mind blown. <laughs> my, my, my mind's already blown. It, my mind was blown when I saw my picture come up in their forum on Facebook. I was like, why am I my picture there? And someone was like, when my worlds collide. <laughs> I love and it. And it turns out there's so many quilters that listen to Tony and Ryan. It's great. But it's one of those things, right? Like it's um, because you listen to stuff while you, well, a majority of quilters I've found in my experience, the story I'm telling myself is that a lot of quilters listen to podcasts and music and TV and stuff while they work. And so it's a great Mm -hmm. way to learn, listen, find other perspectives, be entertained, while you work. And so it wasn't a surprise that there is some overlap, but it was a surprise that it happened so quickly. <laughs> like, so, like the next day after it was released. And I'll tell you what, you'll love to see it. <laughs> John would like more of it, please. So if you could just pop his photo up enough times in the forum. <laughs> yes, that's fantastic. Maybe, maybe the. The tarp quilters need to unite and, I don't know, do like a community project where we each make a block and and make a quilt. Inspired by stories from Tony and Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, that would be quite the the filthy quilt, but it would be (laughs) a fun one for sure. (laughs) Well, it's funny because Pammy Jane, who her interview will come out after your interview, I spoke to her last week and we were talking about the crossover between fandoms and Quilts, because I don't know whether you remember, but a number of years ago, and I still haven't looked it up, and I should, so I apologise to that quilter, but there was a, I think it was Betty Crocker, Crocker, Betty Crocker, I think, her name is, I don't know, anyway, (laughs) Okay. I'll I'll have a look, Um, she made a quilt, or the quilter made a quilt, of Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec, but it was like a pixel quilt oh, of his amazing. face. And then through a weird turn of events, and I think because the quilter lived in LA, it turned up on the Parks and Rec set and there's a photo of Nick Offerman who plays Ron Swanson with the Ron Swanson quilt in the hallway of Parks and Rec on the set. And oh, my so gosh. There's That's been- awesome. Right? It's amazing. I love it when that happens. And so... Um, so let's play six <laughs> six degrees of Parks and Rec right now because I also have a quilt-related uh, association with Parks and Rec. Oh, do you? Not as exciting as that one. Yeah, so one of the patterns that... Um, we since retired it, but I had a pattern called a Spell It Out, which was an uppercase alphabet pattern. So it had all the letters of the alphabet and you could uh, spell anything you wanted and make your quilts speak. Um, So one of the first people to post a quilt they made with it had made a quilt that said, be the Leslie Nope of all you do. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Oh, that's good advice. And it just made my heart sing. Yes. Yeah. Well, we should make a bacon quilt and see if we can get Kevin Bacon. Six degrees of bacon. (laughs) Yeah. celebrities and quilts are so did you know that harvey firestein is a quilter who's harvey firestein (gasps) harvey firestein i hope i'm saying it right you so he's an actor very deep voice he was in mrs doubtfire he was very famous for playing edna turnblad on in um hairspray on broadway oh he's amazing oh he is a quilter yes He's a quilter. I started, I, I, he came up on Instagram and I was like, oh, that's fun. Someone made him a quilt. They're like, no, he's making the quilts. <laughs> oh, look at My him. My day was made. Oh, wow. And he's got like an amazing eye for color. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, John, that's cool. So, Harvey, if you're listening, shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Oh, and he always plays some of my probably, favorite characters. Yeah. There's probably more secret celebrity quilters out there. We just need to to find out. Yeah, find well, I, th- out. I thought you were going to say, um, uh, what's her name? Kelly Clarkson. Remember when Kelly Clarkson went into Craft South and bought all the fabric and made made the judges on The Voice quilts, her first quilts? All quilt. the quilts, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. My goal is to get Taylor Swift to be a quilter. Could you imagine if the Swifties I, we, were motivated? There was video of her stitching or a picture knitting. or something. Knitting go, or stitching? Going around. Was it knitting? Might have been knitting. Oh, I would have thought was it was knitting. knitting. Maybe I just maybe I just saw what I wanted to see. Yeah, the lie <laughs> I'm telling myself is that Taylor Swift is a quilter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. The story I'm telling myself today. <laughs> Cause really we want to get I think. Yeah. You think? I I think I think Tony of Tony and Ryan's podcast would love quilting. I think Tony She's a crafter. Yeah. I think both of them would really love a good quilt to cuddle under. Not together, separately, obviously. But Yeah. <laughs> oh Because <laughs> <laughs> for a while there oh. I thought they were married. And then then I read I saw something where they're like not married and then I'm like, are they brother and sister? Like, what's the but yes. No. No, they're just fret that they're be- they're best friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. It's a, um, but I think everyone should have quilts. That's my, every time I see a quilt in a show, I get really excited. It, like that thing of everyone should experience what it's like to have a quilt in their life. Yeah, I never had quilts growing up. Me neither. Which is, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's not that I missed them, but it's funny that, that I found them anyway. Yeah. And, you know, maybe maybe part of me is making the quilts I wish I had. <laughs> When it's, I was a kid. <laughs> it's something really, like I grew up in the tropics so I, and I've moved back to my hometown. So this is not, not an environment where you go quilts are the natural, a natural thing. But mm-hmm. it's surprising how many people are quilters here. And then when my kids' friends come over to stay, they always want to sleep under quilts. They don't want to sleep under comforters or dunas or, and so you go, there is just something really special about a quilt. And, like, we have quilts all over the house and nine times out of ten, if the air conditioner is too cold, someone's under a quilt. They're they're the nice consistency for snuggling on the couch. They wrap really well. When they get a bit of wear and tear in them, they're so moldable and, yeah, I don't know. It's such a weird thing that you end up in this place. If you're fortunate enough, you end up where you love something so much yeah it's it's it it was one of those things that even when I was uh when I was in school I was aware of quilts at that point but not interested like I was aware but not really interested but it it's it caught me the when I decided to make one for the first time before I was even done the first block I was like oh this is my life now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah i find it really funny if someone because um we were at our kids school this week for their passport to learning thing and we we're in the library meeting the librarians and who quite frankly have an amazing job and do an amazing job the whole teaching staff i was just so thankful that they're teaching him and he has this great school to go to but we were in the library and he was showing me the arts and crafts section in the library and the sewing section. And, and I said to him, oh, is my book in here? Like knowing full well it wouldn't be. <laughs> and he's like, shh, mum, no, don't be embarrassing. And then we came out of the <laughs> row and the a librarian was standing there and she's like, would you like to go over there and write a letter to our author pen pals? And I go to my kid buddy, you could write a letter to mum. I could be your author pen pal. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and the librarian's like, did you write a book? And I'm like, yeah, I did, but it's it's just a craft book, which I shouldn't say, right? As soon as it left my mouth, I was like, 
because I've got friends who are published fiction authors and I go to them, you've got the yeah. easiest job in the world. You just make it all up, right? No one's fact-checking your math. But if you write a quilt book, you have to make everything. You have to do the math. You have to write the instructions. You have to do all the step-out photos. Like it's a production to make a craft book, not like some tippy-tappy, oh, the butler did it. <laughs> so, uh, No, I, th- I- I think that's a good point for the craft community as a whole is, is, and I find it even unfortunately more so for women, you know, that word just, it's just this, it's just that. And then, cause it undervalues the work that crafters do. And then that has consequences because then people don't want to pay crafters what, you know, <laughs> the pay yeah. that they deserve to do. Um, and it's giving and, and permission it, yeah, to mean, them. To, to undervalue it. Because if they go, you're the artist and you go, it's just a, then why should they put any more worth on it than what you do? And so, yeah, it's a really, yeah. it's a difficult thing. Yeah. So. Um, just is a word that, that I, I, so I used to work in sales at one point and uh, you would, you would always be, it would get hammered. Um, into like to, to, to drop that word because you have such tendency to you know if you're calling someone oh I was just calling to <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know or I just wanted to see no lose that word <laughs> you know it's there um, was an article show, in the New- show the value yeah well an article in the New York Times a few years back about the use of just and especially for women to not say just and that was the mm-hmm. whole thing is that just undervalues I was just thinking of you I was just calling. I It's just an email to say, and for me, I found I use just when I don't want someone to think it's a big deal. Like I'm like, mm. I, I just want to ask where that thing's at because I, I'm not asking because I want to chase you up or pull you up on it because it's late. I need to know so I can make plans for my thing. So it's not a big deal. And so I use just to do it. And uh, at the end of this article, I was like, I'm never using the word just again. It's And so I consciously try to pull myself up when I'm writing emails or sending text messages yeah. or to not use the word just. Um, but, yeah, when I said it to the librarian, I was like, oh, I've just set the craft movement back 100 years. And then I said to her, I'll drop <laughs> in a copy and you can add it to the sewing section. And she's like, we'd love that and then I turn to my kid and I go and then you could come in on lunch break and see a photo of mummy and it's like I've never left you <laughs> like, you are the biggest embarrassment stop it fast forward two months you're gonna go visit the library you're gonna go look at your book and he's gonna have drawn a mustache on your photo <laughs> who did this and he's gonna say I have no idea yeah, but he does it all the time. So he was like, and we hadn't. So then he was like, "Stop embarrassing me." The next stop we did was his French classroom because um, French is the language that they learn in primary school. And we're walking up to the classroom, and I'm going croissant, je m'appelle, and he's like, <laughs> "Stop it, mum!" <laughs> as we hit the door, I belt out, "Frère Jacques, frère." <laughs> it's like you are not coming back ever again. I'm like, <laughs> I'll teach you, kid. My favorite, my favorite French word is pamplemousse, which is grapefruit. Oh, pamplemousse, p a m p l e m o u s s e. I've always wanted to make a quilt that just said pamplemousse. <laughs> yeah, well, I was really surprised because I think so. I have a really I think harsh accent. And so if I say anything that is not English, it sounds really horrible. And so when we're in there, I'm really conscious of, it's just, I'm massacring one of the most romantic languages on the planet. And then I heard our kids (laughs) speak French for like the first time. And I'm like, buddy, that sounded amazing. Have you thought about being like a (laughs) French teacher? And he's like, no. And I'm like, wow. Well, I'm glad he didn't get my genes on that one. But, yes, it's the um, – when he was three, he was learning Spanish. 
at the preschool that they were kindergarten thingy that they were at. And it always it still to this day cracks me up. But he was like a little three year old kid. And they learnt hello. No, thank you. Anyway, a strong Australian accent. And we go, What did you learn at school today, buddy? And he's like, Grassy ass. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure it's not as harsh a consonant as <laughs> it's, That's amazing. <laughs> oh, it's just so funny. But, yes, but it is one of those things. Oh, like I would like to know what all the words for, like, sewing and patchwork are in different languages. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I've had, I can't remember who, someone had approached me and asked me about translating patterns into French because French is a second language yeah, yeah. here in Canada. Or it's a, sorry, it's an official first language, but it's it's <laughs> most <laughs> to all our French Canadian friends. I'm we, very we, sorry that yes, John's lying. I am. <laughs> I am so sorry. It, which is funny because I'm actually French Canadian <laughs> myself. But uh, <laughs> but I meant to say <laughs> that's. French is very widely spoken <laughs> in Canada as well. And there are actually quite a few French quilters that I've come um, into contact with. But it's funny because it's such a, a specific vocabulary that I've never really paid it, either paid attention or come across the, the specific vocabulary yeah. for sewing terms. So that's always, yeah, that's interesting. I should look into that. I always like it when you see. go somewhere else, like somewhere foreign, and you go to them, what's the word for... I don't know, something. Say you go, what's the word for glasses in French, right? And the, and it's the same word as it is in English and they're just like yeah. glasses. But they just say it with a little bit of a, yeah. <laughs> so there's, um, it's funny because uh, a lot of French Canadian speakers, they're famous for um, kind of adopting English words in, into the vernacular. So you would say like, oh, uh, nous allons au mall, um, you know, like, or I knew some down the parking, like the like parking lot, like parking. Like, uh, so it's really funny. I mean, actually, I'm I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna shout out. <laughs> so uh, one of our our followers and a friend of mine he lives in Montreal. He was actually on Family Feud <laughs> um, in Canada. Yep. And hi, Jordan. I'm about to embarrass you. So he was doing the fast the fast money and. Uh, the uh, host was asking him, like, oh, like, what's what's the French word for coconut? <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> and he says, coconut. And, but it, it was funny because that wasn't actually the word, but he just said it with a French, <laughs> French intonation on it. <laughs> <laughs> coconut, but it's actually noix de coco. It was just really funny. It was a it's a funny clip. <laughs> it's like when they're in, is it Pulp Fiction, where he's like, I went to Amsterdam and, I, you know, the crazy thing is that I went to McDonald's and it's a quarter pounder is a Royale with cheese, a Royale with cheese. And then the other guy goes, and what's a Big Mac? And he goes, Le Big Mac. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. <laughs> Was it Amsterdam? France? Somewhere. He went somewhere. But, yeah, we were only talking about it the other day when it was like when English words – become part of the vernacular of another country, but they sound so yeah. much more exotic. And it, mm-hmm. if I had a, a sexy accent, I'd be applying it to everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've been narrating my life. She reaches down and touches le coconut. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How did we get onto that? I don't know. I often think that about my life. It's just zigs and zags all over the place. But yes, so <laughs> I need. I was, I'm actually just about to call it one of my favorite fabrics because it's kind of related. Um, one of my favorite fabrics from the the kit. You might be familiar with it. Are you familiar with Lori Holt's B background? Mm, yeah. Fabrics? Actually, you might have mentioned them. Before now, where did it go? Anyway, so there's uh, for those who aren't watching, there's clouds in the poop uh, Winnie the Pooh quilt, and the clouds. I I actually kind of wanted to make kind of a nod to the literary 
root <laughs> of Winnie the Pooh, if you will. So they, there's one B background. It's called penmanship. And it's like, uh, it's white background. And it has, of course, so 54 fabrics is a lot to go through, I guess, to find it. <laughs> anyway, I can't find it right now. But it's it has like the old cursive writing, like, workbooks you would have as a kid oh yeah 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 so it's the i've got some in my stash because it's perfect oh do you oh, yeah it's, isn't it great yeah yeah it's um it is it's the cursive practice like books does that make sense the pages where you would have yeah. it pre-printed on it and then you would just trace over the top of it i don't know why i can't find it right now which they the never stash. teach kids and now they don't and oh, it was such a shame but it's it's one of my favorite fabrics from this, so it's kind of going going back to learning other languages and things. I guess that's what made me think of it. But, a, but it's, it's cool. So it a good text print is hard to find. Like it, it is, and what I like about it is that it uh, you can use it as like a blender, so it just kind of fades into the back. But you could also fussy cut words out of it like yeah if you want kind of like serial killer style <laughs> if you wanted to <laughs> what? It's kidnapper leave Why the money this? yeah <laughs> leave the fabric so, in the garden bin so the <laughs> the no the notes that the lakeside long armor leaves are made from fussy, fussy cut, cut penmanship i'm telling you john this thing writes itself someone's gonna it's steal our idea and we will curse the day we didn't put time into it <laughs> we should do a long so arm, a long a lakeside long armor serial quilt, like a block of the month mystery quilt, where it makes <laughs> some sort of. Does Melissa? Did you tell Melissa that we think she's a serial killer? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, she loves it. Yeah, <laughs> good. Because it it is one of she... the best names. Lakeside. So I did. I sent her. I sent her the picture that I sent you. Yeah. So there's a, a, a new AI tool on Instagram for those who aren't aware. It shows up in your messages and you can ask AI to like imagine things for you. So I said, imagine a female quilter who is a serial killer named the Lakeside Long Armor. And it came up with like the perfect image. It was just so <laughs> for good. A book cover. It is so good. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, we are so uh, my husband often, one of his things that he would like to do if he wasn't so busy uh, looking after my craziness is write a screenplay. And so we oh. subscribed to, and I'm sure it's an American thing, So, but Masterclass, which is an online oh, yeah. learning platform, but with celebrities and um, successful entrepreneurs and all that sort of stuff. But it's a big one for writing. I, so they have lots yeah, of Yeah, I just saw an ad. An ad today, Martha Stewart's. Oh yeah, she's good. Class. Martha's on it, and Anna Wintour from Vogue. Um, she's on it oh. as well. I know. <laughs> I had to watch Devil. What love Anna? Wintour. I watched Devil Wears Prada the other day, and but they've got lots of authors and lots of screenplay writers on there. Like Aaron Sorkin's got a masterclass on it, and he's the guy that wrote. West Wing and the newsroom and one of our favorite oh, writers. Wow. Anyway, so we've been watching a few of them. And I said to him the other day, I've got this idea for a book series that I would like to do based on the experience that I've had in my professional life and da 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 And now I'm like, maybe I should just write The Lakeside Long Armor. We should do it as a the, a podcast, there you go. serial kind of drama play thing. I wonder if Melissa would play herself. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> she would probably love it. Yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's so funny. There's something about, so Masterclass and, and like uh, Skillshare are similar. Yeah, um, yeah. Less celebrity driven. But uh, there's something so satisfying to me and calming to watch someone do what they're really good at. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> we um, like it's just, and I think that's that's why I think Instagram is is so fun for me creatively is to see other quilters out there who are so good because every most quilters are really good at one thing. Yeah, and to see them do that is is just a lot of 
a lot of fun. Yeah, it's um. So <laughs> I'm reading a book at the moment called Atomic Habits because I'm so far behind the rest of the world. It came out a few years ago. It is I I'm about a third of the way through it, and I would recommend it as a different way of thinking about habits and especially if you're like me where okay. um, over the years people have said, oh, you just need more self-discipline. And I think I'm pretty self-disciplined when I want something. But having read a third of this book, I'm like, oh, it's not more self-discipline I need. I just need to set myself up for being able to easily to do the thing I want to do on autopilot essentially. Anyway, I don't want to spoiler alert, but it's a very good book. And the guy who wrote it, James Clear, has a masterclass. So the other day I'd, oh. I'd done my top three tasks for the day and so I was like, I've got a bit of time to kill. The kid's not home yet. You know, I'll just I'll have a little bit of a sit on the couch and just, you know, learn something. And I put on James Clear's thing on habits. I was asleep within the first ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I can't form good habits. <laughs> yeah. But, yes, normally very excited to learn from people. But the thing of um, – so on Instagram I get sucked into watching when people put post videos of like quilting, obviously, because mm-hmm. I don't quilt and so to see someone actually quilting – is just mesmerizing to me. But like I've there's a lead light glass guy that I watch his stuff because he's so quick and he does it well not quick. He time lapses it so it is quick, but he's so proficient at it. Glass blowers. I love watching glass blowers and what they do. Oh. Um Do you watch Blown Away? Yes. On Netflix? Yes. Oh. Cuz I don't know what it is about glass, but the color in glass and when the light hits it and the textile yeah. nature of like the tactile nature of it and but the glass is like and the da- the danger of it yes like i would cry like i would just sit down and cry to get 90% through so imagine if quilting was like that you got 90% oh. through a quilt and it just suddenly caught on fire <laughs> i can't <feel> like <laughs> Um, Wait, I'm taking notes for our, our Lakeside Long Armor series. Let's see. Quilts awesome. spontaneously combusts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that blown away always. To d- Blows you away. Yeah, but to get so far into something. And the Great Pottery sh- Throwdown, did you watch that at mm. all? When they get something goes in the kiln and it comes out cracked and I'm like, I'm crying for these guys who've spent this time. Yeah. But, yeah, all of that stuff where people are creating and in their – what is um, the flow? What is that book? The art. The art of – oh. There's a really good series on creativity and I cannot – see, Alzheimer's. I can't think of who it is. I can see it. I can see it. It's only a little book but I can't think of who wrote it, but he calls this thing where you get into the state of flow where time kind of just stands still and you're in it and still, you, yeah. you just kind of you can't hear the rest of the world and you're creating and you're just, and he's like, as an artist, that's what you should be aiming for is to find that flow state. That f- Yeah. And that's. It's almost like a stream of consciousness. Yeah. And we're so fortunate to have something that does that for us because there's people go through life not having that experience and I can't imagine what that would be like to not love something that you do or to to have something that you can express who you are. And we'll be right back. If you're like me, you love quilting, you love fabric, you love patchwork, you love everything to do about it. When you're not doing something for work related or family related or you've got free time on your hands what you're thinking about is quilting 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 fabric 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 patchwork 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 that's all it is if this is you then i have the challenge for you 100 days 100 blocks It's a simple challenge. I ask you to sew one patchwork block a day for 100 days. If you're interested in sewing along with me for 100 days as we make a 100 block sampler quilt, then check out all the information at nomangel.com. 
Click the link in our bio and description for more, and I can't wait to see you there and to sew along with you. And now, on with the chat. So if it wasn't quilting, what would it be for you? Oh, that's a hard one because I've tried a little bit of everything. Oh, oh, oh. Graphic design. We know it's not scrapbooking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, yeah. No, um, well, I did, ironically, I did try scrapbooking before quilting. Oh. <laughs> I, think- I, just, I just wanted to prove to you that I, I do listen to your <laughs> podcast. I know what that mean quilt teacher said to you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think graphic design, surface pattern design. Because that's the thing that I yeah. get lost in other than quilting is doing all the graphics and making stuff look pretty. But I really think any gift that you were given that allows you to create, what about you? What would you do? <laughs> I realized after I asked you that I didn't have an answer for that myself. Yeah, see? And then I was like, oh, I wonder if she's going to throw that back at me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <I've, laughs> I mean, I've always flirted with the visual arts. <laughs> Does uh, Matt know? <laughs> so <laughs> the secret. The secret. I don't I don't know. I always Yeah, surface pattern design seems like again that's so close to fabric design. I know, right? Like it's just <laughs> so, <laughs> And I don't like uh, working with anybody else. Like I I often we have um a an art director who we use for like the patterns and stuff like that, who's amazing. And she's just done her first fabric line with Andover. So shout out to Shauna. And I often working with her over the years and we've been working together. Lizzie House introduced us um, is how I like to tell people, but we met at doing a Lizzie House class. Yeah, I often feel for her because I'll send her an email and I'll be like, I really love that, but it just needs to be more red or more saturated or, um, or something. And I think that's why I could never be a graphic designer. I love it and I could spend hours faffing about making stuff look pretty and designing stuff. But it's when you work with somebody else and you've got to realise their vision that all the fun gets yeah. sucked out of it for me. Like people often go, do you do commission quilts? And I'm like, no, no, you can buy a quilt I've already made if that's something that floats your boat and I'm willing to let it go. Yeah. But I won't do a commission. And so I think I wouldn't be very good in anything that relied on feedback from other people, which is horrible, yeah. isn't it? Like I feel like that's a failure, but in some ways. It, no, it's, you know what, it's, it's not a fail. It's, it's, it's a good thing that you know that about yourself because we have a very finite amount of time <laughs> on this planet and we have a very finite amount of time to craft. Yep. So you might as well you craft what you want. Yeah. Craft, craft what you love. If you're not loving what you're making. And so I, yeah, I used to do a lot of commissions. Yeah. I did a lot of pet portraits and I teach it now and I did a lot of quilt commissions. And again, it's not that I didn't enjoy doing it because any day that I was making was better than yeah. any other job that I ever did. Yeah. But, but I just enjoy making my own stuff and my, my own thing so much more than, you know, uh, so I, I definitely, I kind of had to cut that. Well, I also time, I don't have time to do them anymore, yeah. but yeah, like you, you have to make, make what you what you love making yeah I just it's I don't know I don't know what else I would do other than what I'm doing now and like we have had that conversation of babe do you got to go back to work because the money I was making working for the government way better than the money I make being a quilter and I think, oh, I don't, mm. I don't think I could go back into that environment. Like I couldn't just the bleakness of all the black that people wear to work would. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, it's it's a very fortunate position to be in where you call the shots and you can do do your own thing. And Absolutely. And as as creatives who – are doing something that we love to do for work. It's also very important 
to protect <laughs> the sanctity of our craft and our enjoyment of it. Because you don't want to get, I think I've heard you talk about this before, because you don't want to get to a place where it starts to feel like work yeah. either. Uh, yeah. I I don't know about you, because we were having this chat the other day here on the compound, because my parents worked for themselves for a very long time, right? And I mm-hmm. would say my father is very creative and they worked manufacturing it's a cottage industry, handmade timber lures, right, which would involve painting and colours and and working with the timber and problem solving and all this sort of stuff. And he doesn't think he's creative, but he also says that wasn't his passion to do that job. It was just something that he was good at and he was able to make money out of it and so he did it. And so we were having this conversation about, because he's like, why do you do what you do? And I said, because I just really love it. Like it makes no money, especially the way I run my business, but I love it and so I'm here doing it, right? And then he's like, well, do you think that the adage is if you do something you love, you'll never work another day in your life? And I'm like, no, I think that's a crock. I think that's a lie that's sold to people to glamorize yes. Making because self help gurus want to sell their stuff, right? So they're telling people, yeah. go be an entrepreneur, be in charge, you do what you love, that you'll never work a day in your life. And I think there's so much other stuff, and you touched on it before the designing the quilt and making the quilt, 2% of the job. The rest of the job, mm-hmm. the 98%, is the marketing, the emails, the IT support, the um, website design, the shipping, the fulfillment, all of those other jobs, that's what you do. Yeah. And you, I don't love bookkeeping, right, but I do it because it keeps the job going. I don't love yeah. shipping, as Lizzie House talks about, you know, but you do it because that's part of the job. So you can't love every aspect of it. But I love no. that doing the shipping and the website and everything allows me that 2% exactly. to sew and make stuff. And so I don't know. I feel for people in this day and age where the side hustle is such a big, you've got to have a side hustle, you've got to make a side hustle, you should be a side no, 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 no. And you're like, yeah. it's a job, man. There is no... There's no other way around it. You will work. <laughs> the adage should be, do what you love and you'll work 100 hours a week for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> In pursuit of that thing that you love, getting the time love, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I just, I mean, I wouldn't change it for the world. We had this conversation here the other day. My mum was like, if you knew what you knew now, would you go back into business? And I'm like... Yeah, but I'd do it better. Like they, I wouldn't have made mm, – I'd take yeah. the learnings and I wouldn't have made all the mistakes I've made on the way, but I would not change this journey for the world. Like the people, what I've made myself, the the skills that I've learned and picked up, the people. Did I say the people? Because the people are really – The people. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't – I think – oh, did you – I don't think you mentioned, though, that the people – Oh, how could I forget the people? The people. Yeah. The people. <laughs> Cause it is, right? Like you said before, it's going on Instagram and seeing that what somebody else has made and the buzz and the joy that it it gives. Like, yeah, I if I'm in a doctor's waiting room, guaranteed, because it's like one of the high stress anxiety places for me on the planet, I'm surfing Instagram looking for what other people have made to get Mm-hmm. to my happy place. And yeah, and it's like you now, you've got the excitement, you're on that precipice of having released a pattern and now you get to see other people make it and see how they interpret yes. it and the fabrics they use mm-hmm. and how Winnie and his friends come alive for other people. Yeah. And that's really exciting. It's just, it's, that's, it's the most rewarding part yep. of what I do is seeing other people make what I've designed or be inspired by what I've designed. People will often say, oh, I, I changed this. I hope you don't mind. It's like, no, like, change what you want. This is your project. It's, it's you know, it was inspired by my work, but it was your project. I want you to have the best time you can doing this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the absolute best part. And there's, 
you know, cause we do, cause we sell kits for our projects. So some people buy the kit and that's totally great. Some people want to you know, use their stash. That's totally great. Some people buy the kit and then add from their stash and make it a little bit their own. That's yeah. awesome too. It doesn't matter what they do. It's always a thrill. Yeah. You know, I like to think it's I provide the thrill. scaffolding. They build the building, yeah. but I provide the scaffolding. And that's the, yeah. um, and to see where they go and what they do. And you, like I said, your community is really supportive and amazing and like cheerleader it, level. Of, we have, yeah, we have the best community of just, I, and it's not even that they're just involved in sharing their progress or their work in the projects, but it's the support that they offer each other. Yeah. It's just so heartwarming to see. We are actually this year, so we are uh, in the last week of May as we're recording this. So we are just winding down our last sew along, which was the Mad Quilt Party sew along inspired by Alice in Wonderland. And f- this year, what we've done is we have we're having a little award ceremony <laughs> at the end of it. So um, we've gotten five nominees. We have five different categories, and some are like you know use of creativity in a block or yeah. use of fabric. We have one that's kit enthusiast. And then, but, but then we have the, the big one, which is going to be, we call it the MVP, most valuable poster. Oh, nice. So we have our, our five, our five most active, active members. Yeah. So I should shout them out. We have Rebecca, Sharon, JL, Katie, and Trudy. They've been very active in the community, constantly supporting each other and encouraging people, especially with the newer quilters. Yeah. And then anyway, so the participants have the opportunity to vote in all the categories for the winner out of those five, oh, that's cool. five nominees. So it's kind of a, a, yeah. So we thought we'd, it'd be a fun thing to do. Um, it's just an honor yeah, to no, be nominated. <laughs> yes, that's why. <laughs> they love me. They really love me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I hope they have their acceptance speeches prepared. <laughs> I hope no one rushes yeah. the stage like, <laughs> like Kanye yeah. and Taylor <laughs> or Will and Chris. Mm-hmm. I was just I was gonna say, yeah, there'll be there'll be no slaps. <laughs> there'll be no slaps. I still I haven't decided what I'm gonna wear yet, but uh, <laughs> let it be something low cut walk. with no back. <laughs> oh, that would that would be lovely. I would ha- I'll have to put a mirror up behind me so you can see all angles okay. to w- walk the quilted carpet. I did think of you uh, last week when I binge watched Bridgerton season three and the <laughs> costuming. <laughs> yeah, but yes, oh. the I haven't watched. I haven't made it past the first season. Oh, I've, I've watched the first season, but I haven't watched the other ones. But uh, yeah, yes, the costumes. Gilded yeah. Age is much better. They're, yeah, I, I I keep seeing it pop up. I'm going to have to take the plunge. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> All right. Well, we've spoken so, for way too long. Unless there's anything else you want to oh my goodness. Wanna talk about? Well, let's. I'll do a quick recap again of the Sew Along. So if anybody is interested in participating, go to our website. It's artistquiltingco.com. Click on the 100 Acre Wood Sew Along. Uh, there are seven, that's not seven. There are several different ways of joining. You can join for digital patterns. You can add booklets delivered monthly. There's a kit that you can purchase. There's add-ons for the kit. So you can get your backing fabric, your binding fabric, or a fill thread. There's even an add-on of the Acorn Easy Precision Piecing products that I love. <laughs> but you get access to our community, which gives you uh, all the patterns. It gives you video tutorials. It gives you... Oh, geez. We do live events, guest speakers, MVPs. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So I I urge you join us. You won't regret it. And you just might have a pretty epic quilt by the end of it. Yep. Yep. You will. All right, John. I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you for your time. Oh, Thank you so much. I, I have so much fun coming here and, uh, and chatting. Thanks for listening to the Fussy Cutters podcast. Enjoyed listening? Why not subscribe so you'll never miss an episode? 
Did you know the quickest way to the heart of any podcaster is to leave a review or recommend the podcast to a friend? It's true. It is. Until next week, get out there and fondle that fabric.